A beautiful 17-year-old girl named Isabel is vacationing at the seaside with her parents, her brother Victor, and family friends. This girl has been without her biological father for seven years and is living with her stepfather in a quite affluent family. At night, her brother Victor walks around the house, checking what everyone is doing. He finds his sister enjoying the pleasure of boredom. The next day, he insists that his sister decides to meet a man named Felix, whom she has always liked. Therefore, Felix invites Isabel to spend the evening with him. The girl happily agrees. As she carefully goes for a walk, she urges her brother to distract their parents' attention. For this, her brother lets her tell him the course of events. After walking with a man, they are alone and make intimate contact. Isabel loses her innocence, a scene which itself shows us that in this process, the girl has no emotions, no love, and no tenderness. Later, Felix takes the girl home, and they say goodbye. At home, she tells her brother that she has slept with him, but this does not arouse any emotions in her. The next day, Isabel goes to the beach with all of her relatives, and Felix joins them. At this point, he realizes that he is absolutely nothing to this girl, and she has no feelings for him. Summer vacation ends, and the whole family returns home. Isabel goes to a hotel. She walks into a room, and encounters an older man who apologizes to her, and tells her he lied about his age on the website. He asks her if she minds, and the girl says she doesn't. After a brief conversation, they sleep together. The man tells her, she looks very young. Isabel introduces herself to Lee, saying she knows everyone tells her that. The old man asks, will they meet again? And he wants to spend the entire night with her next time. To this, Isabel responds that she can only meet during the day, not on weekends. The man is very sorry. At this point, they say goodbye. Returning home, on the subway, the girl reads a book by Chatterlow Belaclos, Dangerous Liaisons. When she returns home, as if nothing happened, she hides the money she earned in the closet. Later, she logs onto the website under her own nickname and watches a video 18 plus. In school, the children recite a poem by Arthur Rimbaud. 17 years old, seriousness is no good, it's time to walk under the lime trees. They discuss the topic of love as well as who spent their summer holidays. A classmate tells Isabel that an old man had once seen her and her sister. Her sister spent the night with him. All of this was to buy a Prada handbag. Then she says she should keep his phone number. Isabel asks her if she is serious. The girl says no, she hates Prada handbags. In the next meeting with a client, Isabel's payment is underpaid. And when asked about the 300 euros they agreed on, the man blackmails her. He says she's not worth 300 and tells her to be glad her parents don't know what she's doing here. Isabel immediately goes to find another client. She writes to him saying the price has changed to 500, the client agrees. She does this with the man in the car. The girl goes home. She is accidentally caught by her stepfather while taking a shower. Then he tells his wife that it's her second bath of the day and he didn't hear her come home. To this, the mother says it's all a woman's business. At night, the whole family goes to the theater. It's there that Isabel encounters the old man she has been doing her favors. She also witnesses a family friend Peter, who vacationed with them by the sea showing explicit interest in her mother. Isabel receives a text message in her phone. Wednesday, same time, in room 6095, she meets this George at the hotel. The man asks Isabel if there are others. At night, her brother asks Isabel how her Felix is doing. She and Felix overnight the sea. Her sister tells her to stop mentioning him. She starts joking with her brother, asking some uncomfortable questions, making him blush, then leaves the conversation. The next meeting with George is not as usual. They have a drink, talk for a long time, then D asks her to be on top. Then poor George dies of a heart attack. The girl is panic-stricken. She doesn't know what to do. Tries to wake him up, but nothing works. Most importantly, she stumbles in the shower and hits her head. Then she dresses and runs out of the hotel room. When she gets home, she doesn't tell anyone anything. She says she slipped in the shower. The mother notices her daughter takes many baths a day, many baths. Two policemen come to the mother's office. They show the pictures of their daughter at the scene of the incident. They tell her it's Isabel. She's selling her body. The mother says she's 17, that's impossible. To this, the detectives indicate they need to find out whether she participated voluntarily or was forced. At home, the detectives explain to the mother that free internet access allows her to register anywhere under a pseudonym. They also find the money Isabel had hidden in the closet. Isabel comes home after school. Her mother sees her. She's waiting for her to have a serious talk. She really doesn't understand why Isabel starts doing this. After all, they have a wealthy family and they always have money. Her mom wants to know if she uses contraception, asks her if she really doesn't do it anymore. To this, Isabel says, everything is in the past now. The mother starts to blame herself. How could she have missed it? How could she let it happen? Her husband comforts her, saying she shouldn't blame herself for this. Her daughter is a very pretty girl. It's not surprising she gets invited. 
The mother thinks, if this man hadn't died, she would continue to do this. The husband says, Isabel has to testify at the police station tomorrow. Then go to see a psychologist. Everything will get better. The next day, Isabel tells the police how it all started. She says, one day after school, an older man approaches them, offers them money in exchange for their services. He also verbally states his phone number. She writes it down when she gets home. A week later, she calls him. They meet at a hotel. She doesn't like it, but she wants to try again. Isabel buys a second phone and registers on a website to meet men. She starts to do this regularly. When investigators ask her if she will continue to do this, Isabel says she doesn't know. It's just a life experience for her. All the police warn her. It's a very dangerous experience. You never know who you're going to meet. No one will protect you. Underage girls can easily become prey. Not to mention these girls often get attacked and even killed. Easy money often leads to a vicious cycle. They go to see a psychologist with their mother. There they talk about everything, share their inner feelings. The mother wants to find out why all this happened. Initially, Isabel tells her parents she doesn't need to see a psychologist, won't go anywhere. What her mother said, she has no choice. Isabel says she could have used the money she earned to pay the doctor. But her mother decides to donate her money to a foundation. The psychologist confirms it's her money, she earned it. Isabel goes to take care of a family friend's children when her parents are on a business trip. When Peter comes back, he suggests taking Isabel home, but his wife clearly objects. She drives her home herself. In the car, Isabel says she knows her mother told them everything. That's why Peter's wife objects to him driving her home himself. Isabel says she is not the person to be scared, and she hints at her husband Peter. Isabel gets home, tries to involve her stepfather in guilt. She asks him about his private life. Isabel tells her stepfather he is not her father. Then she asks him what he thinks. I think you are in your teenage years now. You want to try everything, but you better be kinder to your mom. Talk to her. He answers her. At this point, her mother comes in. Here's their conversation. She takes the girl to bed. The mother tells her a demon possesses her daughter. She sees her looking at him. The husband says it's just a provocation. He understands everything. The mother decides to talk to her daughter again, but the conversation is not successful. Isabel says she knows about her and Peter. She asks her if she slept with him. The mother says if she says she slept with him, it would be different. Isabel answers that she would know her mother trusts her. In another meeting with a psychologist, Isabel tells the doctor she doesn't feel anything during the process. But when she remembers it at home or school afterward, she wants to try again. She says she gated the man who died many times. She liked being with him because he was different. Except for the last time, he just wanted a little. The girl blames herself for his death and says she killed him. A classmate tells Isabel, she spent a night with a boy, it was her first time, but she didn't feel anything, now she is worried. Isabel calms her down. She says it often happens the first time and suggests they go to a party together next weekend. The girls go to a party with classmates. At the scene, Isabel immerses herself in the atmosphere. She drinks a few drinks, then goes out on the balcony to get some air. There she chats with a man. At one point, he says to her, you know, if I tell you I want to kiss you, but then he suddenly apologizes, saying he was being stupid. But Isabel responds you can. They kiss. Isabel immerses herself in the feelings. They develop a relationship. The stepfather goes to call the kids for breakfast, finds Victor doing something interesting. When he decides to invite Isabel for breakfast, he hears they are also busy in the room with the boy. After breakfast, Isabel tells the boy, their relationship is over. She doesn't love him anymore. She pulls out the hidden SIM card from that phone. Next, we see Isabel going to the same hotel she used to go to. An old woman comes to greet her and tells her she is the wife of the old man for whom the girl provided services. She tells Isabel everything, how they met and their private life. Then she takes the girl to room 6095 for the same fee, arguing she just wants to see the girl who slept with her husband and the place where it all happened. This elderly woman needed to be in the same room where her husband died, just as Isabel herself needed to be because Isabel blames herself for her husband's death. After a while, Isabel says thank you. She feels much better. She falls asleep and wakes up alone in the room. If you enjoy this video, please give a like and subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.